blood sacrifice really doesn't have to occur too often for me to, to, to participate in that. Uh, although I know in Haiti it, it, it happens quite often. However, you also have to take into account that the animals are being eaten, and so it'll happen. They'll rather than just sacri- than just killing a, a, an animal, a chicken, and eating it, they'll actually make that a sacrifice. So it's it's really intertwined with with even their agriculture. Okay, well, I, I'm glad you explained that because you have to admit, I mean, blood sacrifice or animal sacrifice, it sounds really scary, and you know they probably have some really good movies out there, but essentially this is no different than say uh, Tyson chicken. Or, you know, many of us out here that live off the land and they go hunt or fish, um, but there's a ceremony performed uh, in honor of the animal or the animal spirit before they eat it or consume it? Well, yeah, well, um, it, the, it, it's really interesting because, you know, once again in our West, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to talk as much trash as I can on Western culture tonight, I guess. But in, in Western tradition, we've really separated uh, ourselves from our environment and from that, that which surrounds us. Uh, Native Americans would, uh, would always ask the permission of an animal before they killed it to, to kill it so they could eat it and feed their family. And, and they, would, you know, they would sense intuitively whether that animal was, was uh, copacetic with that or not. Mm. So... Mm-hmm. So we, we've really moved away from that, you know, where, where you know, and I, I've gotten into hunting where I'll take out my 30 out 6 and just go, uh, you know, get, get a, uh, a deer in my sights and, and, uh, and pull the trigger and it's all over, whatever, no harm done, it's just an, a, a deer. Well, it, the, really when you get into the, the, the fact that you're, you're taking this animal, you're offering it as a sacrifice to a, to, uh, a deity, you're possessing that animal through ritual, you're calling the spirit uh, of whatever, whatever entity you're calling on, you're calling its, its essence down, filling that animal with that essence uh, before the sacrifice, and then you eat, you eat its flesh, it becomes a very literal uh, sacrament. So, so it's really, like I said, in, in Haiti, that's, uh, the, the agriculture and the, the religion don't really have uh, a border there, whereas we've created that definite border where, okay, you can kill animals in a slaughterhouse, you can pray to God in mm-hmm. a church, but never the twain shall meet. Yeah, you know what? I, <laughs> I've uh, been visiting uh, courthouses recently, and uh, one of them I saw, there was this guy in jail. He didn't speak any English. They brought him in, um, but they were reading the charges and everything in English, and uh, it was a felony charge. He was in jail, and this was for killing an animal, um, contrary to, I guess, the Fish and Game or Wildlife Commission's laws or something. And it's like, huh? Really? Have you been to the grocery store lately? I mean, anyways, I don't know all the details on that, but we'll discuss that when we return uh, with EA Co. Editing on Truth Brigade Radio. All right, welcome back. Raising a little hell tonight here on Truth Brigade Radio, Friday the 13th, uh, with E.A. Co-Edding, Practical Spirituality and Black Magic. He has authored six books, working on number seven about mastering the self. Hopefully we'll have some time to talk about that. But EternalAscentPublications.com is the website if you would like to join our little star family in the chat that's over at truthbrigade.com um ea let, let me ask you this are they able to eat meat um if they have not performed the ritual well yeah sure uh, what the ritual does and what, what you have to realize about uh, haitian vodan is that the the majority of the the rituals and ceremonies you're going to do have something to do with uh possession and uh, and so, uh, yeah, as the worshiper, the greatest communion you can have with the spirits that you're worshiping is to become possessed by them, uh, so they can live through your through your body uh, and, and uh, merge with your identity, so you can learn more from them and, and really give all of yourself to them, literally. Now, uh, that, that'll that take many forms where you'll have a spirit possess your altar. You'll have, you'll have one of the loa actually uh, possess your altar, and then it's, uh, it's basically residual essence will remain there. 
Uh, and so in, in the same way, you would offer the animal up to be po- possessed by the loa. So the loa will actually enter the animal. Before you take an knife to his throat, before it even knows what's going on, you, you'll actually see the stages of possession where the animal will start to, uh, you know, it'll, it'll even go through convulsions and, and then a complete calm when the spirit enters. And then you'll uh, uh, perform the sacrifice and, and, uh, and continue with the ritual, and then afterwards you would eat the animal. But that, that doesn't have to occur in order to, in order to eat food in Haiti. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that, it, it's just that, uh, you know, when, when, when people think, especially in the United States, when people think of a, a blood sacrifice, they're thinking of these uh, deranged adolescents who are out there killing cats and throwing them in, in the woods, and that's, uh, that, that's more of a... a, a a neurosis than it is uh, in any kind of real uh, occult discipline. Just about every religion that performs uh, blood sacrifice of animals will use the, those animals for food. Okay, okay, wow, all right. Um, you know, let, let me ask you this. Um, gosh, so many questions and so little time. Um, I, I would like to know a little bit, though, about your background in, like, the uh, Temple of Blood um, and the Demonic Church of the Meridian Order. Um, I don't know anything about them. So if you can, explain kind of what they're about and, I guess, uh, why, why you are not with them currently. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I started aligning myself with uh, with these various organizations. You know, when I was 16 or 17, I started looking for a uh, a black magic order that I could join and, and uh, that would teach me all that I wanted to know. And uh, most, just just about every uh, occult lodge out there will not accept you until you're 18 years old. Um, you know, they're they're already under extremely close scrutiny. The last thing they need is is to have you know these Christian parents, uh, uh, you know, suing them for for teaching their 16 year old, uh, uh, you know, the, the arts of black magic or anything like that. So. Uh, when I turned 18, I actually was flooded with a, a lot of these uh, these groups that uh, that I had contacted, wanting to know if I was still interested and whatnot. Uh, I allied myself with the Demonic Church of the Meridian Order, which, you know, thinking about it now, it was a really hokey religion um, where, where they believed that their leader was uh, a demon that was incarnated into a human body, and so they worshipped him and and that you could sell your soul online by signing a form wow. online. It was, yeah, it was really a to, to, <laughs> to, to the leader of the religion, the, the, the demon in the human body. Online, so, even. On, wow. Online, yeah. I mean, that's what the Internet's done for us now. Um, oh, <laughs> no, it's, it, was, it, it was really amazing. It was really a hokey, hokey religion, uh, but it was, it, it was fun because I, I was able to get in there and use that as a platform for my own teachings, where I was actually teaching people, uh, and we we had uh, thousands of uh, people that were that were active in this church, and so that gave me a platform that I could go, okay, here's what you can do, uh, and so I started writing uh, discourses for the members on how they could uh, communicate with spirits and and perform rituals and such, and uh, uh, the the church fell apart uh, basically because uh, because of me, I. I, I uh, demanded that that uh, that a large portion of it be turned over to me because I had I had uh, the knowledge that that everybody in the leadership lacked and uh, you know I, I was ordained a reverend and and I was working my way up in the order but I uh, I, I kind of got uh, more ambitious than, than what they were willing to to hand me and and I caused some issues that that caused the church to completely disband. Um, but, but I moved on to to to, to aligning myself with uh, the Order of Nine Angles, which he is a traditional satanic group, which means that they they recognize the existence, the literal existence of of uh, demons and dark gods and evil uh, spirits that they'll align themselves with and uh, and perform works, uh, uh, rituals, and ceremonies to attract these entities and these energies into their lives and and. Uh, uh, the the Order of Nine Angles was extremely um, extremely uh, extreme with with what they uh, what they 
wanted to propagate as, as far as uh, acts of terrorism, um, criminal acts, uh, things that'll 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 really rack your your psych your psyche uh, and, and push you to to your father's extremes. Um, both both What's in the, the spirit- reason. What 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 do you think is the reason that they use um, uh, or that they call on demons to assist them rather than say angels? Well, because uh, their their goals are nefarious, so okay. so okay. so they, yeah, their 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 goals are are, are the, um, the 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 order of nine angles has has the goal of of cr- uh, creating a super race of human beings uh, that they call um, uh, Homo Homo Galacticus, I think, which is a you know um, an intergalactic uh, race of humans where. They would basically uh, uh, systematically destroy uh, people in on this on this earth and in the systems that that aren't aren't uh, up to par with their their standards of perfection, which wow. is physical, psychological, spiritual perfection, and uh, and destroy. How would they go about that? Oh wow! Uh, through through uh, selective human sacrifice, uh, where they'll actually oh, choose wow. choose a, a, an offering and uh, and either uh, assassinate that person, abduct them, and sacrifice them, or or use a, a ritual method uh, like a curse that would kill that person. And they'd Amazing. also they also believe that the the greatest human sacrifice was uh, mass human sacrifice uh in war that uh that if if they could uh, create wars that would eliminate specific uh um specific races or specific uh uh political structures that that would advance their cause but as you can wow. see this is a, this is really a kind of a hitlerian uh uh utopian idea that that has always been extremely just destructive, and yeah. uh, and so you, you can't call on you know Raphael the Archangel to help you out with this because you know you don't want his answer uh, if you call him up for that. I see. Uh, <laughs> and, and 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 it's really a cyclical process when you when you start working with with these darker more sinister entities, and uh, um. You, you, you just kind of start playing with them. You yourself become darker, uh, more malevolent, and then they'll continue to go, okay, now let's just take it a couple steps farther. And so you progressively move into this darker spiral where you're calling on these dark entities to help you do dark things, but the only reason you want to do dark things is because of the spiritual influences that surround you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I... And, It'll usually, it'll usually begin, you know, the, I, I'm thoroughly convinced that, that nobody really gets into black magic um, because they, they naturally have an inclination towards evil, but, uh, but more because there, there's, there's some, something that's severely lacking, that, uh, and usually that's a, a loss of power in early childhood that they're trying to reclaim. And they're trying to compensate for, and uh, and so they'll get into these extremely dark systems, and and it sucks you down this uh, this this pipe really really fast. Uh, as far as you know, once again, you have that those those influences, those dark energies that that, that are going to start influencing your judgment and your perception of things to to the degree that you, you you go darker and darker. Before you know it, you're living in a complete world that you didn't you didn't even see before. And uh, and your perspective on everything is is completely altered. Wow, that that is heavy. How did you break away from that? Well, uh, you know, it, it, it was really a kind of a gradual thing. Uh, I, I found myself in an extremely dark place um, in, in several ways, where where I was uh, uh, using a lot of. Uh, uh, drugs to to kind of keep me up uh, for for weeks on end with uh, without sleep or or food, so I could focus all my attention on uh, on ritual and and on uh, communing with these uh, malign entities. And uh, my my whole life, I could just kind of see was quickly spiraling down. And, and I, you know, I was I wasn't just bordering on on criminality, but I was living in the criminal world. I was living uh, in this this underground. Where 
you know, really, uh, you know, I, I, I really didn't have an identity outside of that, that whole dark sphere. And, uh, and so I, I started breaking away with that. I returned to the Mormon church because that's where I grew up. That was what was comfortable for me. Um, that didn't last very long at all. Uh, and I went back to the Mormon church and, and, and quickly realized, uh, as I studied, study the uh the gospel anew with fresh eyes uh kind of realize the the fallacy of the whole system 